The topic today is Hatova Mitiv, which is the final bracha of, of, of Benjamin. Page 424, source 13. The question is actually asked, is this bracha a daraisa? Is this a biblical nature? Is it rabbinic? Or is it a darabanan? So believe it or not, it actually appears to be a machlokas. Source number 13 quotes a Yerushalmi, which says the following. Amar of Yehuda, Mishnasin Harugei Besar. We should knew how we gave Besar the Kavura when the Besar was the last stronghold after the Bar Kokhva revolt. We're talking about the year about 135. The Besar was destroyed, obliterated by the Romans. This was the, the this is after the destruction of the base of Middash. Uh, but what's 125? I said 135. It's more like 125. It's about 50 years later. The Jewish community ran to a place called Beitar, and they were wiped out. And their bodies of this massacre remained for a number of days. And finally, when the Jewish community had, were able to enter Beitar, they discovered something quite miraculous. One, they established this bracha tova mitiv. Why hatov? Good. That despite the fact that these bodies were lying around for an extended period of time, they did not decay, there wasn't a stench. And two, and bestowing goodness, they were actually buried properly and were not left to remain above ground. So therefore, that they did not smell and have the stench, and they were zochet to proper kvura yisro. So, by the way, from here, there's drabanan, right? This is a bracha that was mentioned later. Now, why exactly would you mention that bracha during Barakas Amazon, <laughs> right? Like, you know, why did they feel that was the appropriate time? Perhaps a conversation for another time. We'll see a, a mention of it later. Marav Huna, he says, no. Tipa Turkey, Rav Yishma, Rav Yishma, Amar Tovah Metiv, Dvar Torah. No. The Rebbe Yishmael says, Atovah Metiv is of biblical proportion. Meaning, it says, "Dichsi v'chalta v'svato berachta zo berkas hazimun." As Hashem l'kach zo hazan esako al aret zo berkas aret hatov zo berkas bnei Yisraelim v'chen hu amir ha'har hatov v'zav avonan asher nasan l'cha zatov v'amitiv. So again, just a reminder: what we saw very important. Rashba from, or was it Meiri? No, was it Rashba from last time? It was a very important Rashba that we saw last week. Which says, what do you mean, Doraisa? How do these things be Doraisa? Zanasaka was not Moshe attacking them, but wasn't Yeshua. So we explained this last week, where we're referring to that the concepts existed, me Doraisa, of Birkasa, but their actual text, we said, was perhaps created later, right? But the, the concept, the concept of benching was a biblical proportion, but Shlomo Melech, who was metakin, the bracha of Rachem, Ali Solamach, Valu Yushalami Recha, was done in the time of Shlomo Melech, but the Concepts of, of of benching is Doraisa. And we see from here that no, this idea of Atova Miti, this idea of bestowing goodness, and, uh, and should as actually of biblical proportions based on the idea, sure, no sen lach. Um, that's what the Yerushalmi seems to imply. Despite the fact that Yerushalmi mentions it, nonetheless, everyone agrees that the fourth bracha is a rabbinic nature, and that has certain ramifications to it. Let's take a look at one of them is mentioned. By the Rambam. The Rambam says, You do not answer Amen to your own bracha. But, however, if this is the end of a series of brachos, who else to say Amen? To your own bracha, you say Amen. Like, B'nei Yerushalayim, B'birkas, Hamazon. Just like B'nei Yerushalayim, which ends the series of brachos. V'lama yana Amen achar B'nei Yerushalayim. What do you mean? It's not the end. It's the Tov HaMetiv. Right? Answer. Because really, you say Amin at the end of a series of brachos. This is the end of the series. This is the end of the series of biblical nature. Moving into, transitioning into the Durabanan section. This is the end of a series of brachos based on the Rambam. The Rambam is saying that's when you say Amin. This is actually mentioned in the Shulchan Aruch in 15. When you finish Bonei Yerushalayim, Amen. Why? Because that is the end of Siyum HaBerchos Doraita. That's pretty clear. 
And the bigger Chiddush is that even Ashkenazim say Amen after Uvenei Yerushalayim, because, as we see in 16, when do you say Amen only? Says the Shkanach. When you have a series of two or more, do you say Amen? Anyone here Daven in Asfaradi? Yachid Chel Amim Amen. Go to Asfaradi Shul, they say Amen after Yishtabach. Ah, why? Those are two brachot. The first bracha is Baruch Shammar. So we see here, there's a series of brachot, we say Amen. <laughs> Says the Ramah, Yish Omrim Einonin Amen Rak Achar Berkat Bunei Shalem Berkat Amazon Kain Haminhag Pashu B'Medinot Elu V'in Lishana This is the famous language of Ramah when he wants to combat the Sephardic Jewry. And he says, this is the practice of Asher Ashkenazim. We do not say Amen after a series of brachot, with one exception, and that exception is Bonei Yeru Shalayim. Now, we saw already earlier, uh, we saw last week, that if you have to bench again, you still say that rabbinic brachot. It's inappropriate just to repeat the biblical brachot. It's almost a slap in the face of Rabbanon. So there's not a major nafkamina between the two, except for the following scenario. Let's say you, you forget Ritze, or you forget Yalav Yavo. So Yalav Yavo at certain times is an integral part of benching. Ritze is always integral. Well, that's actually not 100% true. Let's go through. It's worthwhile taking 10 seconds. Ritze, if you forget to say Ritze at the night meal, do you repeat or not repeat? Forget to say Ritze Friday night. You repeat benching? Yes. Yes. What about Shabbos Day? Do you repeat benching? Yes. Sudash <coughs> Lishit. We do not because maybe you don't need that bread and you don't have peros and you could. Uh, okay, so we don't repeat it. <laughs> what about Yav Yavo? Definitely. Depends. Really? Oh. Definitely. <laughs> oh, on a new moon, since there's no mitzvah of a Suda and Rosh Chodesh, we do not repeat Yav Yavo. However, Yav Yavo on a Yom Tov, which plays an integral role of a Suda, you have to have a meal on Yontif, and therefore, if you forget it, Tzarich Levarech Odba, you have to bench again. So, with that, set, you'll, we'll now appreciate 17. Ta'a, v'lo v'izkir shal Shabbos. What do you do? Omer, Baruch HaTah Hashem, Elokim Melecholam, Asher Natan Shabbatot Lemenucha, La'amo Yisau B'yahava, Lo'ot V'lebrit Baruch HaTah Hashem, Kedesh HaShabbat. This is a very rare bracha to say. Very rare. Right, some the good benchers will have it printed in. A little star, maybe put it at the bottom, put it after benching, but it's quite rare to say. Mahadasagi Baha Bracha, Davka, and here's the key. What was that? Oh, generally speaking, what's going to happen if you forget what say? If, if you forget Yalva Yavo in the Amida and you're at Sim Shalom, okay, you could go back to Ritzei. If you've already taken, if you've finished, or if you're a little kind of Shema, right? I don't know, you take the three steps back. You're toast. You gotta go to the beginning. Rush, rush at fila. When it comes to benching, your window is like microscopic, right? You say uvenei yushalayim era kodesh bim heira bi amenu. Baruch Hashem bunei yushalayim amen. If you say Baruch Hashem elokinu malchlam, the moment you say hakel, like alakel lavinu mal, you're toast. Why? Because you've already started the bracha de rabbanan. You go all the way back to the beginning. So your window is very small. If, however, all you do is you say, you could transition into, it's supposed to a caliph. So your window is a very, very small window. It's literally six words. So at Lechat Chila, you should, but yeah, you don't need to do it good, right? I'm saying a Kelavin all of a sudden, oh, Shinatan, right? So it's a very hard time to catch yourself. And since we hardly ever say that bracha, it, you know what I mean? It's not even shagru b'fif. You're not even used to saying it. The, the odds of you saying it, it's, it's tough. You have to flip. I've and, before. What? I think I've done it before. I think, I, I think I've said it once my entire life. Maybe twice my entire life. It's not a very... It uh, doesn't happen too often, right? Mm-hmm. So. Because what are the chances that you, that, that you start focusing on right <clears throat> Right. Exactly. Right. And you just continue after... Right, then you continue to, once you've said those two lines, 
you go into the bracha of the right? It's such a rare, such a rare occurrence. Right? What you've already spaced out and you've forgotten it, chances are you're going to forget it the next line too. Right, so... And then you only remember when you get up to the Harachamon, you're like, Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. You, exactly. Yeah. You, <laughs> so. Wasn't no. it weird that by Allah Nisim, you can just throw it in by the Harachamon? Yeah, Allah Nisim doesn't matter. Just throw it in anyway. Because, <laughs> again, know, because, we're, because, no, because Pur, right, Purim is only the Rabbanan holiday, so. Oh, it's probably your carrot, you don't see the Rabbanans anyways, and then you can just, whenever you want, you can see the Rachamon. Yeah, that is yeah. probably also not true. Okay. <laughs> now, says the... Uh, Mishabura, 18, the Rosh the Kevan, the Kfar Siem, and again, what we've said already is mentioned in the Mishabura. The Kevan, the Kfar Siem, say their brachot or aita, ve siachta tome him, upatach, but over my div, to me, the Ikarat Raglan betfila yudachas. Just like if you started taking your steps back and you've now severed your conversation with the Rebonish Olam, you've taken a step away. So too, if you begin saying the brachot tova my div, you're toast, you're finished. Because Ritzer Yalav Yavon Ayanta plays an integral role of Berkas Amazon. And it's as if you've taken your three steps back, so to speak, from benching. Okay, and that's why you have to Chosya the Rosh Hatfila. Vim Tab Berkas Raviz, Kigon Shiloh Amar Bashemu Machus. Oh, so it says you can't say Shemu Machus. If you made a mistake and you didn't. Oh, so I was wrong. Berkas Hashem Elo. No, no, he's just saying if you happen to miss. Oh, you didn't even say. You, Uvene, you didn't say. That's what he's trying to say. Okay, fine. Then you'd be okay. Alpha Bishak Far Gamar Osai no Chazer Ella La Tova Metiv, she bracha bifne atma. Oh, I see. Sorry. I, I see. Right. You, forever you just left out God's name. I don't know why you do that. Yeah. But I guess if you just left out God's name, then you just go back and say it again. Okay. Now. There's one thing, however, that's odd about the structure of this bracha, which is worthwhile pointing out. Wow, we spoke with this when we first started, way, 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 way back when. There's a concept in brachos called the bracha husmucha l'chaverta. When you have two brachos that are one after another, if they're posech b'baruch u mesayim b'baruch, the next bracha does not begin with baruch atah. It borrows the baruch atah from the previous bracha. The classic example is the following. When you bench. So you sense baruch atah has Baruch atah Hashem hazan es hako. You don't say bracha. You say no den. Ah, oh, then you say at the end of it, Allah Azam Mazan. Right? So when you begin with a bracha, you end with a bracha. The next bracha, which is samuch lechaverta, which is adjacent, does not begin with baruch atah. For example, every single bracha in the Amidah, you begin with baruch atah Hashem to start your Amidah, you don't say another baruch atah Hashem. Right? For example, at nighttime, from Arif, you begin with baruch atah Hashem, then you end with el chavet kayam, baruch atah Hashem, el chavet timachim, baruch atah Hashem, ama'ariva ravim. You don't say baruch atah Hashem, you go havara rabah. Any time you end with a bracha, you don't begin with another bracha. Because that's called bracha smucha lechaverta. If that's the case, why do we begin with? What about a bracha smucha lechaverta that goes against that rule? Answer is, that's this Tosvos in 19. Was created as a separate bracha. Vim tomar amai inach osemes be baruch. V'yesh amashum ketzara here. Rakshatig nu lachar kach shalosh malchulos v'shalosh gumulos v'shalosh hatovos. The reason why it's a, it's a separate bracha. Do not bring a tova meitiv as an example of a regular bracha. It is the exception, and that is actually what's mentioned in the Shibole Halaket, and that is also mentioned in source twenty one in the. Aruch Hashulchan as well. It's a short bracha. It was made from this special, you know, specifically made for three gamul that God bestowed and the three goodness that God bestowed upon them. And therefore, it is a very different type of natured bracha. Okay? The Shulchan Aruch goes through how, like, before they, like, before, like, if you, before you add all, like, the tov and the, the it's like, it ends up being, like, one line. It's like a really short bracha. Yes. Right, that is right. We, 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 the version that we have is a bit of an elongated version of it. The original version is actually much shorter. Yes, no, that is uh, that is true. Which is why perhaps it makes sense that you should call it a, a bracha ktsara, 
Yeah. But now it doesn't actually appear to be so tzara. But it was the original creation of it was 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 short. Yes, no, that is correct. Okay, the next topic, which is twenty two to the end, is all these harachamans. Like, where did that come from? Why do we do it? Is it? And that will be uh, the end of our Birkat Mazon section. But for that, we're going to have to wait until Thursday, Mirzah